Right, greetings brothers and sisters and friends. Uh, this is going to be a, a Bible study. This I'm going to do an introduction on what this study is about and it's going to be on the blood atonement. Uh, the blood substitutionary atonement excuse my writing of Jesus Christ okay so um just like to give some uh context of uh this study, just to give some uh, understanding, so I'm just going to have a prayer. Um, gracious Father, I pray that uh, this study will be a, a blessing to anyone studying your holy word and studying the, um, the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ and the, the true significance of him paying for our sins, laying down his life. Uh, spilling his precious holy blood to redeem the sinful world and overcome the grave, Father, and give grant all, all that believe him sincerely um, the victory and the free gift of eternal life. I pray that this will, uh, your Holy Spirit will bless all, bless and reach and uh, help all the lambs and all the sheep and anyone that is uh, studying your word and has come across this study I pray you'll help me um, clearly share the um, study I seek to give with all my heart and I pray Father and ask thee in Jesus Christ's name, Amen Right, um, just to sh uh, frame some context of regarding this study and um, let me just check if I'm not, my head's not in the way oh. Right under the camera, right. I'd like to um, just give some context to uh, the Old and New Covenants or Testaments, which uh, were both blood. They both had to be blood. Um, the sacrificing of blood, the giving of blood. Now the old, we've got the old and we've got the new. And how and I'd like to show that the they're, they're identical, it's just the application of each covenant. Um, so you've got um, the old covenant, which was um, temporary, temporary and for the covering of sins until the fulfilling of the, the, old, the old testament and the bringing in of the new and everlasting covenant. Everlasting covenant. So we've got the old sacrifices, uh, which was for the Jews, and then we've got the new everlasting covenant or testament, which is for the Jews first and the Gentiles. Right, so um, the, we've got two two halves of the Old and New Testament. Now, testament is uh, uh, there's no remission of sins without the spilling of blood, and um, so the Old Covenant was um, in part given to the um, now the Lord reveals line upon line, so it's an ongoing revelation of His plan. So uh, the, the Jewish people and the Lord's will and word was laid out through the living, through their lives. If, if you study the, the, the old Mosaic law and the, uh, the seed and tribes of Israel and, and their, um, the Lord's dealings with them in the wilderness and delivering them from um, the captivity of Pharaoh. And um, 
we see that, well, that the Lord showed them that he, the types of him, his body, his temple, his holiness, and his um, his heart and mind on on holiness and and his contempt for sin, um, and it, but also showing his mercy and love through his children, through his prophets, of that love and mercy to come. So we got the fulfilling of the old covenant and. So the Lord gave the Mosaic Law, which was holy, but nobody could live the law because it was a schoolmaster to keep them in the way. But nobody could keep the law because it, it, it was to convict uh, the seed of Israel of their sins. So they would have to offer the Lord provided them a way where they could have a temporary covering for them sins because they couldn't keep the law because the law convicted them of sin so they knew that they were sinners so this is the Lord revealing of his word by the power of uh, uh, through the word of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit which was the convictor of sin so we had the law which was a schoolmaster for the Jews so the old covenant, which so covenant is a contract given of God to man for his purpose for mankind to receive salvation and redemption and the free gift of eternal life. And this was what was laid out in the Old, old Testament. And also it, um, the Lord wanted the Jews to um, reach out to the Gentiles. So, that, so they were, the Gentiles were included, but they were outside of the camp. So uh, I'm just going to signify the Jews in the camp and including the Gentiles. But there's a separation because Jesus' ministry was, was solely to the Jews. So the, the law, as Paul said, it was holy. It was given of God to Moses and Moses taught, taught it and recorded it and... Uh, the Jews obediently um, and rebelliously. Those some 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 were wicked and rebellious, but there were faithful Jews that um, kept the commandments, kept the promise, and uh, it's all revealed in um, the Old Testament scriptures in, in Exodus and uh, throughout the uh, throughout the books, throughout the prophets, throughout the history. So we have the law, which only Jesus came and fulfilled the law. So the lawgiver, Jesus, came in his advent and uh, kept the law perfectly, all the feast days, all the laws, and he was the Passover lamb, the, uh, the sacrifice, the one time and only sacrifice. Whereas the Old, the old, um, the old Testament was a temporary sacrifice. Temporary sacrifice for the covering of sins. Not, not. It wasn't for the justice. Uh, the, the imputation of God's holiness and the, um, a one, a one time and forever sacrifice. It was a temporary sacrifice to keep the Jews in the way until the Lord would um, come as the prophets as Moses revealed that, the, that another prophet would come greater than Moses and all the, all the Old Testament uh, prophets uh, spoke of the uh, coming of, of the Lord coming of the Son of God coming of, coming of the Messiah to uh, bring in righteousness his righteous kingdom and he laid down his life. He was a Passover lamb. So, um, so the old old covenant for for the Jew, but also for the Jews to reach out to the Gentiles because there was an outer court for the Gentiles. And then we have the new and everlasting covenant, which was only only completed. It wasn't Israel were not cut off, um, and I'm going to include it in in the second part of this um, scripture study. Um, the Jews were not cut off from their, the Lord's promise. It's just that they they didn't believe in their Messiah, so they they cut themselves off. But but the Lord God 
included Israel and fulfilling his everlasting promise that he would never forsake them, he, he included them in his new and everlasting covenant. And uh, the faithful who, who received the Messiah and those that the Lord draw unto himself to believe, to um, teach his uh, um, good news, his gospel and his word um, to the Jews and the Gentiles was given. So the promise, uh, Jesus fulfilled the uh, prophecies, all the prophecies um, given regarding his time on earth his first advent and uh, he kept the law which he gave himself he fulfilled it and he was a Passover lamb and he by his death by his blood by the spilling of his blood he completed the end he fulfilled the mosaic law and his law continues in the law now of of grace so he gives the law of grace which the law is established through faith in Jesus Christ, death, burial and resurrection and in his blood will redeem his, he, he, he was holy and innocent so he paid the uh, demands of, of God because God is just and holy and he can't look upon sin and sin e e equals death so all fell short of the glory of God because all sin is none righteous and so Jesus had to come into time in his creation as, as man and as fully man, as fully God to lay his life down because he had to lay, he had to give his life. So we're going to be looking at all, all these areas in the scriptures. But, um, just to give some context about the Old and New Covenant. So the law, the Mosaic law was fulfilled through the lawgiver who is Jesus Christ who's, who's He's got many titles, the prophet, the high priest, the Lamb of God, the Son of Man, the Son of God, the Messiah. And his law is now established and fulfilled by love. So the law today is the imputation of God's holiness unto good works, unto love. So we have the love of God, because God is love. God's holiness, holiness is love, pure love. And the only pure loving person ever walked this earth was, was Jesus. He's full of charity, mercy, justice, full of all, all grace and truth from the Father. Displayed his, um, his power and love and grace by his miracles, by his works, by his revealing of the Father to, to the Jews and to the Gentiles, to the whole world. So the law now is grace. It's, the law is fulfilled by grace, it's established by love, by grace, by believing. So it's a continual, a continuation from the old into the new. So we have the law of grace um, and that's the New Testament. New Testament, which is the shedding of blood. So sin equals death, so Jesus had to die. He had to go into the grave as, pro as it was prophesi prophesied as and fulfilled as in Jonah. He went into the belly of the whale and he come up again. So we have all the types and patterns in the Old Testament all pointing to Jesus' life and ministry. And he fulfilled all those Old Testament prophecies perfectly, 100%. And he came, he was in the, in the grave or in the ground where the, uh, the righteous dead and the wicked dead were waiting where they're, they're waiting in their, in their place, in Abraham's bosom. And Jesus um, had the keys of hell and death. So Jesus never suffered hell, because hell had no hold on God, on Jesus, and neither did death, because he was life, he was God, and he overcome this thing. He has the keys of hell and death, he has power. He was, he's given power from God, because he is God, God the Father gave all authority to his son and his son by his power and by the power of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit he was able to go into the grave and we look at that scripture as well and preach and uh, display his um, righteousness and victory and, and he, he came up out of the ground victorious over hell through, passing, passing us through hell and death so we could escape 
the spiritual death, the spiritual separation from God, because God created all mankind to know and receive eternal life, and that was his purpose. And Jesus came to fulfill that purpose, and that was by the, uh, his substitution, his, him paying for our sin and paying for our death. And he paid for that on the cross, being holy, being pure, being righteous, being God, but also being a man. So he would draw all men unto himself because we could relate to a man and see that he was a holy man, a holy man of God. He was God's son, God's beloved, only begotten son in the flesh, full of grace and truth. So he's by his holiness, he completed his law, showing that he was God, fulfilled the uh, prophecy, showing his power and his um, omnipotence, omniscience and omnipresence, and um, completed the law, overcome sin and death, and brought up the righteous from the, from the belly of the grave, and left the uh, wicked in, in their place. In, in torment, in in in, her, in their in their punishment for their their sin, and he ascended back up to heaven on the right hand of God, and we have the record of the scriptures. So we'll be looking at um, this study is just going to be a Bible reading of the parenthesis of Gethsemane and the crucifixion and the resurrection because it's. If we just focus on one area, you need to. Uh, um, it's very important, I believe, to to look at the whole, the whole of Jesus' life and ministry, his whole purpose. But that would be just such a big study. So I'm just giving some context to lead into the areas of study, which will be um, a parenthesis for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of Jesus's. Um, Suffering his Passover, his time in Gethsemane, his cruci his betrayal, his illegal trial, his death, and going into the grave, his victory and resurrection. That that's the areas we're looking at. That I will be read just going to be given a, a Bible reading in a, in the parenthesis, one after the other, and uh, also to consider the Lord's complete complete advent and ministry to the Jews and then how that opened up to the Jews and the Gentiles how he continued com, um, fulfilled his promise to the Jews that they, they never he'd never forsake them in the covenant um, perhaps I'll look at the uh, legal rights of the ownership and inheritance of the land of Israel for the Jews how that was um, demonstrated in in Jeremiah's time how he brought land and uh, had the deeds when all all of Judah and all of Israel were apostate and worshiping Baal, and the Lord raised up Jeremiah and showed him what they were practicing in secret. And um, Jeremiah was um, spoke of um, was brought his uh, father in a, a relative's house and land, and he had the deeds of ownership and he, he witnessed that in front of a court and had a legal record and put it in an earthen vessel. So there's evidence to, to show that um, the land of Israel is actually legally binding. It's the um, promise that that was um, promised to the seed of Israel for their inheritance, which is will be fulfilled in the millennial reign. So um, anyway, that's another area of study. So we're going to just want to consider those areas in context to the study, which is the atonement of Jesus and then we'll be looking at the time in the um, Garden of Gethsemane what what took place there and then his um, journey to the cross and dying for the sins of all mankind that they may uh, receive the free gift of everlasting life and we're looking at the fulfilling of that covenant so in so, as the um, Mosaic law was fulfilled, and no one could keep it, and then the way was made, we had 
it was for uh, Jew and Gentile now. And it was um, a once and forever covenant now. So it's a new and everlasting covenant rather than the temporary covenant. So for the sacrificing, continually sacrificing animals and the spilling of blood to cover their sins until the Lord, the Messiah came, who was Jesus on the cross. And then he, that's offered to the Jew and the Gentile for the fullness of his grace. So there's neither Jew nor Gentile. So it's the same covenant. It's exactly the same. It's just the application is slightly different. So it's faith alone. And it's grace to grace. To grace. So we're looking at the it's important to understand the two, the two covenants, or the two testaments, the two contracts between God and man, and the testament, because it's a spilling of blood, because without the spilling of God's holy blood, the whole world would have been lost in sin. It's like if Adam would have eaten the tree of life, he would have been given eternal life, but he wouldn't have been redeemed from his sins. So that couldn't happen, so that's why Adam was banished from the Garden of Eden with Eve and the tree of life was um, shut, cut off and taken out of the way, it was um, blocked so uh, Adam couldn't eat the tree of life being a sinner because there has to be a remission of sins, a cleansing of sins so the Lord has um, given the gospel, repentance towards God for the remission of sins through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ, which will grant, uh, um, appropriate what he's completed on the cross, fulfilling the Mosaic law, and giving his, his law within the heart of any believer, Jew or Gentile, which is his love and holiness, uh, which is completed, which is fulfilled. And it's everlasting, it's eternal for the Jew and the Gentile. And, and any all men all mankind uh, so that that's very important to consider so we've got the um, the temporary sacrifice the Passover for the permanent attainment once and forever and the two halves and the uh, substitutionary atonement for our sins by a, a loving holy God who spilt his blood to redeem to redeem mankind so that's the context, that's the um, teachings of the word and I will, in, in part two, I'll, I'll be looking at the, uh, oh yeah, so let me just think about, cover this. So in the Old Testament, how look, the similarities between the, the Jews, it's for Jews and the Gentiles. But the, gen the Gentiles were kind of outside the camp. So the fulfilling of the New Testament, the New Covenant by Jesus Christ, it brought the Gentiles into the covenant. So they weren't outside the camp anymore because the temple was rent and the, and the Lord offered his body, his holy temple, because that's what the temple was for. It was a type of the Lord's body in the wilderness and the, you know the congregation of the, in the tabernacle that was all uh, a type of the Lord's holy body and he, given his holy body and spilling his blood um, we can have a remission of sins and his holiness imputed into our temple so we become the body of Christ so we are of his body and our our bodies are the temple of the living God, so it, it brought into it brought the the Gentiles into the into the main heart of the camp of Israel, if you like, into the promise, and and that that makes all um, forgiven of their sins and and to receive the imputed holiness of what Christ completed on the cross's victory. So he grants 
all the victory over sin and death. And uh, that that's what I wanted to cover, really, for the contrast and context of the atonement and the study that I will be moving into after this. So I'll leave it there and close in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, just a quick PS. And I also wanted to look at, um, to consider the, the dual nature of the Lord Jesus Christ in reflection to the dual nature of the believer with um, the imputed righteousness of God but living in a corrupt body because we're in it's important to understand that we're um, uh, you know non-believers can't comprehend uh, that um, that doctrine that we are have the Lord's imputed righteousness but we also remain in a corrupt body until the putting off of our uh, corruption and putting on incorruption in the resurrection of Jesus Christ when we either are taken up into heaven in the rapture if that's something we'll experience or that we die that our physical bodies die but our, 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 our spiritual life remains in heavenly places as it today we're in um, our spirits are in heaven today in heavenly places in Christ before God uh, but we we remain in a corrupt body so I wanted to consider looking at the Lord's um, when he was in the garden he's um, he's he's He's, he knows all things, he knows he's going to die, but we see the, the human side superimposed with his, um, his omnipotence and his power and his, his omnipresence and uh, omniscience. It was knowing all things, that the Lord knew all things. He knew he was going to die, he knew why he was coming to earth, he knew everything. He was God's son. But you see his human side growing... Uh, being uh, being sin for us, being a man, being human for us, but being that being holy in God and man for us. So we're, I wanted to consider that point in the context of this study, and I wanted to add that point, and that slipped my mind. So um, just to consider those things, and uh, looking at the whole purpose of Jesus's uh, life, his temptation. His advent, his the prophecies, his advent, his ministry, tempting in the wilderness, his uh, John the Baptist. Consider the whole life: his transfiguration, his suffering in Gethsemane, his trial and crucifixion, his betrayal, his uh, willing sacrifice, and his victory over sin and death, and his resurrection unto eternal life. And I'll close there in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Part two of my um, study, the blood substitutionary atonement of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, forgive me for if I'm a bit unkempt, I'm a bit um, behind having a scrub up and a shave. I'm going to, uh, just included, you can see, a pattern of the dispensational plan of salvation of grace. So I just in, in, want to include this, um, sanctification unto justification, then the cross, you see the, the crossover, the Passover there, the dispensation of the fullness of the Lord's uh, complete victory, his finished work on the cross, to justification and then sanctification of the believer. So it's exactly the same. It's the same gospel, faith alone. Like Abraham, if you read in Hebrews chapter 9, no, chapter 11, possibly, I'm not sure, um, of the faith of Abraham, how Abraham was justified by faith because he, he believed. And then through belief, he was obedient to the words and commands of God. 
Uh, today the commandment is to believe in the Lord Jesus and to follow Jesus, to um, be baptised and to break bread and fellowship and uh, share the gospel, make disciples and uh, li live according to what the Lord has for our lives. Um, I'm going to read a, a scripture from um, First uh, Philippians. Uh, of this is Paul's gospel, and Paul received the fullness, and so he shared the fullness with with the church. So I wanna, just want to start with uh, the uh, book of Philippians. I'll probably read uh, one or two chapters straight through. But um, I'll have a prayer. Um, dear Father in heaven, um, thank you for your beloved Son and the gospel, and the free gift of eternal life and receiving your word. And I pray and ask Father uh, to share and convey your heart. I pray for your Holy Spirit to uh, teach and um, edify and fill the believer with your love. I pray that this will be a blessing to those who are lacking in confidence or understanding or they're intimidated by uh, learning from the Holy Scriptures. I pray that they will be filled with confidence and this will be conveyed by your grace through the reading of the Holy Word and I pray that this be a blessing and a lift and I pray for them, all those saints who are suffering uh, affliction or buffeting or struggling in sin, I pray you'd lift them and draw them unto yourself, to your heart, to your mind and your will, that their, their lamps may be full and their wicks trimmed and their flame, the flame of your love uh, in their lives. I pray that you will help us, draw us unto your, your heart as we gather, we gather in these last days to um, our Saviour and we, we're looking up for his appearing, his faithful promise. And we pray that um, he may come soon. We, I pray, Father, that uh, this will uh, reach and touch any of those who uh, need you. I pray that you will provide for the needs of every individual that is seeking your, uh, your first and for your living waters, hungering for your word, that this will, um, that you would uh, attend to their need. And I pray and ask you, Father, and thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I uh, just want to um, consider a few things about um, uh, the Apostle Brother Paul um, and how how he was the chiefest of sinners and he was had a thorn in his flesh. That's another, another uh, consideration I'd like to consider. Um, nobody really knows what Paul's um, thorn was, but um, just like to give a few thoughts about that, some of my own opinion, my own considerations. Also, I've had the thorn in my flesh, and I, for me personally, I, it, it, it's not only to help me. I think it's um, Paul being the chief of sinners. He had to understand and know what other people, what other, what, if you, you consider, I think it's in James, that the pure, the pure, pure religion is to, to uh, minister unto the fatherless and the widows, that's, that's what the James uh, termed, forgive me for my paraphrasing of the scriptures, uh, just to convey the heart of true religion is to consider those uh, two people, I don't think it, I think it encompasses consider all the most needful, you know, the the weak and the young, the fatherless, the widows. They, you know, to consider everyone. Like the Lord uh, commissioned Peter, feed my lambs. Do you love me, Peter? And 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 uh, Peter, uh, Peter reaffirmed, you know, I love you, Lord. And the Lord said, well, feed my lambs. And then he asked him three times, feed my sheep. And uh, so it's in. I think it's all encompassing in, in Paul's ministry, that love, that grace, that fullness of that grace he received. And it's all, that grace has been dispensed and the Apostles has revealed, Paul the Apostle through his heart has revealed all through the scriptures, the record of his, his testimony, his gospel, his gospel, which is Christ's gospel given to Paul. 
and I, my personal uh, considerations about the four and impulse flash is that he had they, he, I think I, I've considered his standing before he was saved and then his conversion and then his conviction of his sin realizing he was a sinner and then because uh, of his knowledge of the the, the law um, his conversion was uh, encompassing that's part of what the fawn was but I, I also think that the fawn in his flesh was to help him re relate to all people because he, he was responsible for all people so I'd like to just throw that in in the mix that perhaps his uh, fall in the flesh was to understand, to empathise, to have compassion, to have that love, to be able to minister to those who perhaps we we can't minister to because we haven't we haven't been in those shoes. So perhaps it was a way of that the Lord could impart his understanding through Paul's ministry that Paul would suffer these things. And Paul was it said he was the chiefest of sinners. So he was all encompassing, he, he considered himself the, the greatest a sinner, so that's all inclusive, that includes everybody in the body of Christ, every sinner who's come into the body, Paul was the chief of them all, so he had the comprehension of everybody's position, everybody's difficulties, everybody's sin, so I'd, and I think that's conveyed throughout, the, throughout his ministry, so I'd like to um, I'm, I'm kind of doing this considering my own difficulties as a Christian and, and you come into the world you, you, and you can look at the Christian body and you can seek out um, ministers and teachers and there's this whole array of apostasy and you, uh, and you have to find a faithful minister teaching the word. It can be very confusing, it can be very daunting. Um, but we have the we have the Holy Spirit. We don't need anyone to teach us. The Holy Spirit teaches us, and we have the apostles and the Holy Scriptures, and uh, we are all imperfect. We are all we're all sinners. So um, I just want to consider those people who are intimidated by not not understanding the Scriptures. Is is not not to worry, not to be intimidated, not to envy. Because there's a lot of, um, you know, there's different cattle. There's a lean cattle and there's fat cattle. And there's a lot of fat fat cattle. There's a lot of um, blessed brothers who um, have a lot of knowledge, have a lot of understanding of the scriptures. And uh, that fatness is imparted onto the leanness of the body. So we can all be inclusive. We can all learn from one another. And even the lean can provide something for those who perhaps who've who seem to have everything so the Lord's made it quite clear in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that the uh, the least members are just as important as, as the middle members and the bigger members so it's all inclusive package so if you, if you feel intimidated I'm going to read um, the, uh, the, the words of Paul to the Philippians the word of the Lord to the Philippians and he conveys that better than anyone could ever convey this um, so, uh, Philippians chapter 1, uh, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ, the day of Jesus Christ, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, insomuch as both in my bonds, and in the defence and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offence till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness 
which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the fervence of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preach Christ at contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defence of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretence or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therefore do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labour, yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a des desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your fervence and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you, or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you a salvation and that of God. For unto you is given in the belief, behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now here to be in me. Chapter 2 If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfil ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let it let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputations, disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither laboured in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be a good com of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. 
for all seek their own, not the things which are Christ Jesus Christ. But ye know the proof of him, that as a son with the Father, he hath served with me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send you to Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labour and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him therefore the more carefully, that when ye see him again ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death not regarding his life to supply your lack of service toward me. Finally, in chapter 3, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers because of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh that he have whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith in Christ, the righteousness which is of God, by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but, the, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers, follow us together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have have us for an example for many walk of whom i have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of christ whose end is destruction whose god is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Chapter 4 Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved, I beseech Eudeus and beseech Sightinch, that they may be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which laboured with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other, uh, other my fellow labourers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. 
Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, thereof to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Notwithstanding ye have well done, that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica he sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all, and abound I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odour of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches, to the glory by Jesus Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus, the brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's house, household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So I wanted to cover that um, complete um, epistle, that letter to the saints, the Philippian saints and the church, the church today, and that example of Paul's heart and love and grace, and how he suffered all things for us through, even though that Paul's not on the earth today, his, his words are still prophetic, they're still active, they're still living, they're still preserved in the Holy Word and they're still a, a, applicable to believers and how, how his heart is displayed, his care for everybody, every sinner, every, every, every child of God in the church body and how that, absor that, that just exudes through his uh, testimony and I pray that the Holy Spirit has um, filled those lacking, those uh, seeking confidence and, and, and boldness to grow in the word and not to be intimidated by um, seeing great big successful ministries but to be content and to be to rejoice always and to um, esteem each other equal as better than ourselves and to give double honour to those uh, uh, those brethren that have uh, large ministries, large responsibilities and to pray for one another, to come to that one heart and faith and I think that is the heart of our Lord just ex just expressed beautifully through Paul and his examples, his love of Timothy, his love of um, his love of everybody. So just to conclude this um, introduction to the parenthesis, which I will uh, move on to, just want to read two scriptures: um, faith alone uh, um, and justification through faith and sanctification of the believer in the old and in the new. So I'm going to start in um, Isaiah chapter 6. So this is the two, the two identical Gospels in the Old Testament, pre the law and uh, after the law, in the law, and uh, post the cross in, in the dispensation of grace. So every dispensation, it's from heaven, which is grace, to grace, back uh, through Christ, grace, back to heavenly places, grace. So it's grace to grace to grace to grace. It's grace, and it's faith alone. Um, Isaiah 
chapter 6. The prophet Isaiah, the mouth, uh, the, call, uh, the Lord called, uh, called his prophet Isaiah and gave him his word, taught him his inspiration, his pure inspiration from his holiness and the spirit and, and into uh, Isaiah's life and, and, and um, exalted Isaiah, um, anointed Isaiah, sanctified Isaiah and lifted him up. Chapter 6 In the year that the king that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this have touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. So there we have a type of faith alone. And the angel, the seraph, coming from the presence of the Lord, forgave, purged him, purged him of his iniquity, washed him clean of his sin. By, by simply by grace, by faith in grace, faith alone in the Lord. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and whom will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, that's Israel, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, make their eyes heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaken in the midst of the land. But it shall, it, but yet, it, it, yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So we see a prophecy of the future, how um, Israel, the people of Israel, the Jews would be blinded and deafened, and they wouldn't see the Messiah, and that would continue unto the fulfilling of all prophecy, in the uh, time of Jacob's trouble and the promise of the Lord's return to restore his kingdom and his people, his branch, to, their f to his faithful covenant and promise. So I wanted to share that scripture because it, it, it covers um, faith alone in Christ alone. And I'm going to read a foot from 1 John, which is a New Testament to the Jew and the Gentile. And it covers exactly the same thing. And this is written for the believer who's uh, received the faithful promise. Uh, 1 John, John 1, uh, first, the first epistle of John, chapter 1, uh, verses, uh, I'll start with verse 8. Um, no, I won't. I'll start with verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Right, let's have a go to John 5. Um, 
Whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begot begat loveth him, that begat loveth him, also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For so ever is born of God, overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that beareth record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believe on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believe not God hath made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave his Son. And that is reflected in uh, uh, Saint, uh, the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 3, that the world is under condemnation, all the world's under condemnation, but those who've believed are not under condemnation anymore. Um, he that believe on the Son of God have the witness in himself. He that believe not God have made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son have life, and he that hath not the Son of God have not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear, hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions, petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin, a sin in, his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a, a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world life in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So I wanted to share that scripture. One, it shows the um, how the Lord ha um, has given his word once you've believed and you've um, received his son, you've received the forgiveness of sins, you've um, repented of your sins, you've um, felt remorse and you've sought forgiveness of your sins, however that's done in your spirit or however that's, um, that individual approaches the cross and they are forgiven and they've received the word in their lives because they've believed and then the word of God is um, confirms to the believer after they've believed that what they've received is of God and he's given his word to confirm that which they have received through faith alone in Jesus Christ alone in his completed work in his victory his um, shedding of his blood giving of his life his victory over sin and death and his uh, um, ascension to heaven to send the gift of the Holy Ghost to the believer and the love of God to shed forth in their hearts for all men, for all believers, for God, for God, for all the brothers and sisters, for all men and that is confirmed and that helps the believer continue on in faith 
So once you've received that, you cannot sin in that spirit, but, but you, can you can stumble and fall back into temptation, and the flesh will sin. So you can't remain in the flesh, you have to put those things off and be restored back to your first love, your, your, the fellowship of, of Christ, which comes through um, confessing of sins and um, putting them behind you and the renewing of your, uh, the Lord granting you that um, appropriation which is once it's appropriated it's constantly on like a light so if you sin you, you confess your sin and you put it behind you and you and the Lord's faithful to forgive you just like in Isaiah oh Lord I'm undone I'm a wretched sinful man he confessed his sin like in the parable of the the unjust and the just oh Lord have mercy on me a sinner and he was um, justified by his faith and belief in in the Lord and and his his honesty that he had sin because like the I, I, the scripture says if we say we have no sin we call God a liar and then it seems to be a contradiction that we cannot sin well there's two natures of the believer there's the imputed righteousness and there's the old nature which we can that can be returned to which will carry it if you remain and turn away from the Lord and you turn your back on the Lord, you're, you that you could transgress into performing a sin unto death, and then the Lord is just to to punish that uh, believer, and they will die, but they will won't lose their salvation, but they will probably suffer eternal consequences for not not following their first love, not keeping to. You. That faithful promise that they received and uh, so I wanted to share those two contrasts and then I'm now I'm going to move on into um, the parenthesis of the Lord's Atonement just uh, just to read and, uh, and pray and allow I'll ask Heavenly Father to to really to encourage people to study these things to themselves I'm not gonna I'm not a great expounder of the scriptures I want to just read through the parenthesis and invite people to study these things and to allow the Holy Spirit to teach them if they're unconfident, to grow in confidence that they may wax bold, bold in the confidence and to share the gospel and to grow in the love and word of God that they've received and I'll close there and wish everybody a blessing and Maranatha. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Continuing on in my um, study of uh, the substitutionary blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. Moving on to the uh, the parenthesis of the the Gospels regarding the Lord's uh, suffering in Gethsemane and his crucifixion, his death, his burial, and his glorious resurrection. And uh, I'd like to just start with a word of prayer. Um, gracious Father, I pray and ask thee to. Um, Help me to convey all that I desire for your for your word and your glory. I thank thee, Father, for the, your, your beloved Son and the victory and finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and the joy that brings. I thank you for my brothers and sisters, Father, I pray. And thank you for all those who are praying for me and those who have blessed my life in the past. I thank you for... All those coming, all those are, and all those uh, will be, and all those who sleep. I thank you for your graciousness and everything I have. I pray that this will be a benefit and a blessing to all that hear, whether they are young, whether they are mature, whether they are lost, 
or found, I pray that this will be to your glory and blessing and this will fill the hearts of those who are seeking your word, seeking your understanding, that they may grow. And I ask if your Holy Spirit will teach and reach all those who are seeking your supplication, your living waters and your heavenly manna from our Lord, from your heart. And I ask, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Right, so, just before we get going, um, reading the parenthesis, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the Gospels, the wonderful Gospels, um, a transitional time of the Lord's ministry and their witness, and the period into the into Paul's Gospel, so we're in that part of the Lord's ministry where where he's uh, displaying his miracles, uh, healing people, showing his love, showing the, showing the glory. And um, I want to encourage people, firstly, uh, not to trust anything I say or my words, but to study the Holy Scriptures and allow the, the Lord, the, the Scriptures to speak for themselves. I want to give uh, some thoughts, some opinions, and uh, and allow the the Holy Word to to do the teaching and the Holy Spirit to edify the believer, edify the seeker in faith, seeking in faith. Um, I want to encourage people to study the all of the ministry. If you're new new to the faith, new to the the church body, you, you've just been saved, or you're coming unto salvation, you're seeking salvation to um, study the areas of the Lord's ministry and gospel. I want to share some, uh, just a bit about the transfiguration and the na dual nature of, of the Lord and what I believe, um, I may be wrong, but what, what my understanding of um, the transfiguration, we're not going to cover this in this parenthesis, but it's an area um, of study. Now, our Lord's DNA was um, from the Gospel of Matthew. It shows the Father's line, which is not Heavenly Father's line, not the Lord's, not Heavenly Father, not uh, God the Father, but um, Joseph, uh, the Lord's stepfather. His line was directly descended from his father's name was Jacob and he was a, um, a son of David so his, his lineage is like the royal lineage of the house of Israel so it goes all the way back to Jesse now Jesse's the branch where that, that was the bloodline of, of, of the saviour King David, King Solomon and uh, also Mary which is in Luke's gospel her father was Heli which would have been Joseph's son-in-law, or well, uh, Joseph would have been Heli's son-in-law, and Mary's line also goes all the way back to the same family, which will all will go back to Abraham and go back all the way to Adam. So there's the two lineages of um, the inheritance of, of Jesus, but Jesus was God, so, um, he, he, he's got an eternal um, gene which is heavenly and his physical body was from Mary which goes back to uh, King David's line and Jesse so we have the DNA of the Lord so now the Lord was sinless and his body was um, human so the Lord would know what it's like to suffer temptation and suffer what it's like to be human so we could relate to Jesus and Jesus took on flesh as a man. Now Jesus ne would never sin and he didn't sin and so he was sinless but his body was would, 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 was human so it had a DNA so his DNA was uh, from the fall of, fall of Adam so it was um, Potentially, um, 
able to sin, but Jesus didn't sin because he's holy, but he, he could experience, um, now you must examine the scriptures and test these things, but Jesus never sinned, but he had a human body which, had, which wasn't perfect. And my understanding of the transfiguration was the Lord's power over the flesh and he changed his um, DNA, if you like, into uh, incorruptible flesh. Now that's, I may be wrong, but that's my understanding of what the transfiguration was. So the Lord in the mount, mountain of transfiguration displayed his glory where the Father said, uh, this is my beloved Son, hear him. So I think that was the Lord demonstrating his glory and power over all things, over flesh. And of course he, he pre performed miracles, he, he knew where to tell the disciples to cast the nets to catch fish, he knew where the fish were every, every time. And the Lord was very uh, uh, moderate in his miracles, what, he was very wise in what he, what he showed, he, considering his power. The Lord was um, very particular in the miracles he performed, turning water into wine, changing matter, uh, raising the dead, um, healing the blind, raise, you know, healing the sick, removing uh, diseases, restoring people back to their wholeness, perfectness. Because of sin, and after Jesus left, people would continue on sinning, and then, of course, they would die. So I'd, I'd like to encourage people to study these areas. Um, anybody who's uh, perhaps uh, new, to, new, a babe, uh, just come to faith in Jesus Christ and uh, learning about the scriptures, um, uh, I want to share a few thoughts about just my experience um, when I was saved. Um, now it's far worse today I imagine than it was when I was saved but there was no internet so it's very daunting to come to the understanding so I um, I want to just give a heads up about going to church, seeking a church or seeking a pastor or seeking somebody to follow, don't follow me, don't follow anybody, uh, follow the Lord and follow after those in, in the word who follow after the Lord and then any brother or sister that you know and see that, that, that their fruits are also following what the, Lord, what the Lord's will is, follow after those, follow after Christ and follow after those who follow after him. Um, now you'll encounter, or, or you may have, or possibly already have encountered, if you're, um, uh, you've been saved and you've had some experience with your salvation, you'll encounter um, Christians and you'll have a conversation and the first thing they say to you, um, I, I met this gentleman the other day and uh, offered him a Bible track and he said, oh, I'm already, I'm already saved. And I said, oh, that's oh, great, wonderful, praise God. Are you born again? He said, yes, I am, I am born again. And he said, um, what church do you go to? And I, and I always say, I'm in the church body, I'm in the body of Christ. What church do you go to? And then, and then they're always, you're always critiqued or what they want to know, it seems like people want to measure, or oh, what church do you go to, what what are you doing, kind of thing. And um, so I want to just uh, let you know that in the, in the New Testament, when you study the Gospels, all the churches were house churches, apart from perhaps the Jewish believers who were where they would worship in their synagogues, there was uh, some people had buildings to go and meet in and worship, but most of the early saints, the early Christians, the only born born again believers, would fellowship in house churches, and you'll see that throughout the scriptures. So if you're new to the faith, um, just be careful not to go seeking uh, churches because you, you you may get scolded, you may get burnt. Um, I would just advise caution and to work, rest in your salvation, study the scriptures and trust the Lord 
and to lead you onto fellowship and uh, in this day and age in Great Britain you're very you may be very limited and you may not have anybody to baptize you you may not have a, anybody to fellowship with you may be in a family where uh, you've been safe and they remain unsaved but that's okay because uh, the Lord sanctifies people who families who who are like that but the danger is if you're saved and you go and get married and marry somebody who's unsaved then you're going to have problems but if you are find yourself in a family situation where you've just been saved you know that you know your your partner or your wife and now marriage is simply when a man and woman cleave together and the two become one flesh and this is um, really what marriage is and then you could go and publicly witness your marriage in a registry office but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't get married in a religious built system um, I would personally seek to get married just lawfully you know licensed to be married uh, maybe wouldn't even do that but um, I'm not married so it's not something I've come across um, but I would just advise to just rest in your in your faith and your salvation and study the word and grow in the word and grow in confidence and um, allow the Lord to lead you into where you meet or where you fellowship and fellowship online you may even um, have an experience where somebody's converted and you, you will start to meet and gather with those people or you might be in a you might be in a family where you've all come to faith so you're a, you're a little house church so I just um, like to share that I wanted to put that in the mix I want to consider some um, areas that we're going to be uh, studying in the parenthesis in the Gospels and um, I'd like to just give my um, own thoughts on, on on what the Lord suffered in Gethsemane now now this is where you need to study the word and um, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you whether these things are so but what I've, what I've come to believe and understand from the scriptures that in Gethsemane the Lord was suffering the sins of all mankind and then on the cross he was dying for the sins of all mankind so um, if you consider um, a tablet, a pill, a bitter pill that you could swallow and then, and then that pill would take an effect in your metabolism as you metabolised it and you'd start to feel the effects of that that chemical in your body and in your life I'd like to use that as an, an analogy for what the Lord was suffering what we're going to be reading and it's quite um, awesome that what God could suffer because he was God so being a loving God and a creator he created all things and he had to lovingly make a way because he knew that mankind would fall and sin and once the ball's rolling it's like dominoes they all, you can't stop it you can't turn back that's why the the way to the tree of life was blocked off so the probation in time could start to unroll but everybody inherited sin so Jesus had to come into time take upon a flesh the flesh being holy in God and suffer all those sins and pay, pay the price because God is just and holy so the Lord's like an attorney, he steps in and takes the punishment. He takes your punishment and execution for you. Because you, because we're all sinful, God is holy, so we all deserve what we, we deserve hell and we deserve to die because we're sinful. But God's merciful, he knows we can't help it. We're born we're born innocent in a, as children, but then we go on to sin. But that doesn't justify the sin that we do and we can't unsin ourselves we can't make up for the difference of our sinfulness our good works won't cover our sins uh, two wrongs don't make a right we're simply sinful in some degree 
you know, and then there's um, a whole diversity of degrees of sin, but we're all sinners, so Jesus had to suffer the sins of all mankind. And Jesus, if you read First Timothy uh, chapter 2, Jesus suffered to die for all men. That's all mankind. So that's every single person that's ever lived, ever will live, and everybody that's living today. So if you can imagine all the pain and suffering and misery in the world, all the injustices, it's, un it's impossible to fathom. And you put all that, every single life, so you put one life, you think of one life, your life, and you put that in a pill, that experience. So if you gave that pill to somebody else and they swallowed it, they would experience everything you've experienced in one go. Now imagine not only one person, but everyone in your street, but not only everyone in your street, everyone in your town, and everyone in your nation, and everyone in all the world, going right back to the beginning, and going right forward to the end, when there'll be a time where the human race comes to a point where the Lord's um, ordained the plan of salvation to end, but only God knows that. So you imagine that little pill with all that, all that, everybody's pain and suffering inside it. Um, that's my understanding of what the Lord drank. He drank the dregs in, in Gethsemane. And because he was God and holy and um, all powerful, he could take that upon his shoulders. He, uh, only the Lord, only the Lord could, um, another area um, of stu important study is, um, the Lord's temptation, after once his ministry started, he was drawn into the wilderness and the devil come to tempt him to overthrow God. But God uh, called his bluff and he conquered Satan and Satan fled and the Lord's ministry was up and running and away. So he displayed his power over the devil, he displayed his power over sin and he displayed his power and gave the victory over death and hell that we may escape. So this is the areas uh, we're looking at. So I'd like, um, like, like just encourage people to study the, the whole ministry of Jesus from the beginning, his um, temptation, his, his uh, transfiguration, his suffering, the highs and the lows of the Lord's ministry, and then, then finally his death on the cro cross. And then, then study the uh, resurrection and uh, the joy that 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 that, that um, gives birth to in your heart when you realise that um, wonderful victory <coughs> that the Lord had, had freely given all, all the believers, and how they were um, uh, only only the few sisters and uh, I think it was Brother John in the, um, the beloved of the Lord who was close to the Lord were watched his crucifixion, everyone in else had just fallen back, fallen away, were just uh, bewildered by, they couldn't comprehend what the Lord was uh, going through and then you see the contrast when they see the Lord appear, the beautiful joy that they experience like little children. So, so um, I'd encourage people to study the whole, the whole Gospels but I'm just going to focus on uh, the parenthesis from uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and uh, his death burial, his suffering in Gethsemane and his um, betrayal and his uh, journey to the cross and his wonderful resurrection and we um, we'll start with Matthew and I think uh, 26 and then read straight through to the end which it, uh, to the end of the chapter and do that with every um, every book. And I'm just going to give a straight through reading. I may stop in, 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 in midpoint and give some thoughts. But my intention is just to read the word all the way through. So let's begin. Matthew 26. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest 
who was called Caiaphas. Um, Chia and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, not on the feast days, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman, having an ab alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, whosoever, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman have done, be told for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, and said unto them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they commented, with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he saw opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto the Lord, Is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a, a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then Je saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Right, now I'm going to pause there and read a scripture from um, Zechariah, uh, Zechariah 26, which is a prophecy the Lord fulfilled. Now the Lord, there's many prophecies throughout the um, Old Testament which have uh, been fulfilled, that the Lord fulfilled. And this is one of them. So let's look that up. Uh, we want the prophet Zechariah. Um, I think it's 31. 26. Um, Uh, 
13 verse 7 this is uh, Zechariah and this is a prophecy given of this actual event so the Lord has already given this uh, prophecy to the prophet Zechariah and Jesus has just reaffirmed that event which is live at that time of Jesus life and it's uh, Zechariah 13 verse 7 Awake O sword against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow saith the Lord of hosts smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered and I will turn my hand upon the little ones and it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And that's a future prophecy of the uh, time of Jacob's trouble. So there's the Lord um, laying, prophesying that he's going to lay his life down because the Lord's a good shepherd. And that God the Father has uh, sent his son to die, his only begotten son to die. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. So the father is raised his sword against his shepherd. And the shepherd is doing the will of the father, so he's willingly laying his life down. And, um, and against the man that is my fellow, that's his fellow people, the Israelites, so have the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be, get, sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. So there, there's a prophecy, and I'll continue. Um, and thus said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus saith unto him, said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice. That's three times. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples, then cometh Jesus with them in, unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter, and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding, exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not I will, but as thou will. Now this is the Son of Man speaking. This is the Lord's human, human self speaking. But the Lord knows only too well what he's, he's doing. But he's been... Um, temporarily left to himself because he's willingly suffering all sin so we're seeing this um, his natural man expressing oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as thou will because he knows he knows that what the will is what his father's will is and he cometh unto his disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What could what could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. <coughs> he went away again a second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, 
Let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave him them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I will kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And behold, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore, wherefore art thou come? Uh, the Lord uh, entertained uh, Judas Iscariot because he knew he was going to be betrayed, but the Lord humoured him. Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword in, into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? In the same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid not hold of me. But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And they that laid hold on Jesus led him away to, Ca to Ca Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses, and they said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, that's the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard this blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face, and buffeted him. Buffeted him and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is it he that smote thee? Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him, and said unto them, That were there. This fellow was also with Jesus and Nazareth. And again he denied with an, with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said unto Peter, and said to Peter, Surely thou art one of them that thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me fries. And he went out and wept bitterly. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Jesus, Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, 
and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went out, went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom, whom they the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. Now I searched and searched. Um, now Matthew calls um, that the prophecy was by Jeremy the prophet. Now, now I'm not sure if I searched Jeremiah and I couldn't find that prophecy, but I did find that prophecy in Zechariah. Um, I'm not sure which. I wrote it down somewhere. I think. Zechariah 13, I think. Um, let's have a look. But I couldn't find it in Jeremy. Um, no, it's not that one. Here we go, um, Zechariah 11. And I said unto them, this is verse 12, And I said unto them, If you think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter's potter, a goodly price that I was priced, priced of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter, in the house of the Lord. So there's the prophecy. And Jesus, there's another prof prophecy Jesus filled, and there's many prophecies, like the Lord would ride uh, into Jerusalem on a colt, and so forth and so forth. And they're all given at different times, at different dispensations. Zechariah, I believe, is 600 years before Jesus. And, um, all the prophecies are different different people, different places and different times and Jesus perfectly fulfilled all those prophecies. So that's what we were this is what um Jesus came to do to fulfil all the all the pro prophecy. But I couldn't find that in Jeremiah, so um I don't know what um uh, Matthew was he says Jeremy the prophet now I don't know, but anyway, that's interesting. Whether uh, Matthew uh, made a mistake, got the books mixed up, but the word is uh, infallible. But that may be uh, that may be our misunderstanding of what he was referring to. Maybe it was in Jeremiah's time and Zechariah. I don't know, but anyway, I thought I'd include that. But that's not to say that it's wrong, and that that it's. Um, scriptures of um are imperfect the scriptures are absolutely perfect and preserved uh, but that is a interesting um interesting thing to uh, consider um and study further and Je right let's continue and jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him saying art thou the king of the jews and jesus said unto him thou sayest and when he was a accused of the chief priests and elders he answered nothing then said Pilate unto him hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee and he answered him to never a word insomuch that the governor marvelled greatly now at that feast the governor 
the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ? <coughs> Excuse me. For he knew that for, for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the, on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in the dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what he evil have he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of, this, of the blood of this just man, see ye to it. Then answered the, all the people and said, His blood be upon us and, and on our children. How true is that, um, that uh, self-fulfilling prophecy of the, the Jewish people rejecting their Messiah. And they were scattered and uh, cursed for rejecting their Lord and Saviour. And uh, the blood was upon them and their children for generations. And you have to look at the um, the pogroms, the holocaust and so forth and so forth and it continues today that that is a, a living reality for the Jewish people because of their out of the way, they rejected their Messiah. So they're hated and persecuted and the author of that persecution is the devil. He hates the Jews, he hates the Lord and he hates their seed. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole that band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail! King of the Jews, and they spit upon him, and took a reed, and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. And they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, place of a skull they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall and when he had tasted thereof he would not drink and they crucified him and parted his garments it's another prophecy fulfilled casting lots that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet they parted my garments among them and upon my vesture did they cast lots and sitting down they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written this is Jesus the king of the Jews then there were two thieves crucified with him one on the right hand and another on the left and they that passed by reviled him wagging their heads and saying thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days save thyself if thou be the son of God come down from the cross Likewise also the chief priest mocking him, with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of the Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him, 
for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same cast the same in his te in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Just make a point here. When we go through the parenthesis you'll see um, different accounts of the same event. Now we if you know anything about the count, one one thief believed, but uh, now we get an insight here at first both thief, thieves it says were mocking Jesus the thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth so we got two thieves there one obviously repents feels remorse and has a change of heart and he believes while he's hanging on the cross he comes to shame while the other is hardened in his sin now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the, unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani, Sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. And straight away one of them ran and took a sponge filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top, of, top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many now there's a prophecy in Jeremiah Ezekiel uh, regarding this event let's have a look let's have a cross reference I think Ezekiel 37 verse 12 Therefore prophesy, this is Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, I'm not sure of the time. Um, so Ezekiel followed Jeremiah. Let's see if I've got a date. A historian has put a date on the um, prophecy, on the prophet's ministry. I don't know, but it's worth looking up. Anyway, Ezekiel 37, uh, verse 12. Therefore, prophes this is um, Ezekiel prophesying of a f Israel's future. I'll start with verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Uh, therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Um, that could be um, the resurrection in, 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 in another time, but it also could um, be the, uh, referring to this event that we are reading. Uh, so when Jesus had given up the ghost, let's read that again. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Just imagine that came out of the graves after his resurrection so this is later on it's looking into the future so after the Lord's resurrection and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many so that event would have been witnessed but obviously the record would have been um, buried it would have been got rid of and it wouldn't have continued on except through the holy faithful word 
and the testimony of the prophets and the believers, the saints, that any secular record would have would have been destroyed. Uh, as far as I, um, as far as we're concerned, as far as we're aware. Now, when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, "Truly, this was the Son of God." And and many women were there beholding the far off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, Galilee, ministering unto him. Among which was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hung out of the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre, sepulchre, and departed, sepulchre, and departed, and there was Mary Magdalene, and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Uh, sepulchre. Now the next day, that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that thou that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest the disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Now, my understanding of uh, Roman discipline, if they would have fallen asleep, they, they would have poss possibly faced execution or, or severe punishment. Uh, in the end of the Sabbath, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Now the angel of the Lord is the Holy Spirit, not, not the angel, not the spirit person of Jesus. It's the spirit person of the Holy Ghost. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and become as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, he is risen, as he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre, and fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet, and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. I think it's fitting that um, that Jesus appeared to the sisters first, um, considering that they were, you know, really compassionate and sensitive to the Lord and his crucifixion, and they were at his, his, his death. So I think it's only fair and only just that they were the first to be uh, to see the risen Lord, the resurrected Lord. Now when they were going, but now when they were going, behold, some of, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel and gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, "Say ye, his disciples came by night." and stole him away while he slept. 
there's nothing new under the sun. That's my, uh, I, I just added that. And, and if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Yeah, so they're protecting the, each other's backs and uh, got, got a good bung for lying and saying to make it up that the disciples stole him away to, to counteract the truth and spread a lie. And that, that tradition continued and that is, um, you know, that's why the Jews today uh, have all these uh, rumours and all these um, opinions written in the Babylonian Talmud that, uh, about Jesus and uh, it will all, all root back to this lie. So they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. There we go. That's where I'd learnt it from. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye before and teach all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So that's the end of Matthew's Gospel. So let's go to Mark. And I'll, I'll read the next uh, parallel uh, Gospel in parenthesis to Matthew and we we have a different um, Mark's a very short book and Mark's a very matter of a fact character and uh, one day we will meet Mark Matthew, Mark, Luke and John uh, 14 chapter 14 after two so we're going to start again and we're going to cover Math, Mark's testimony and bearing in mind these these were written a long time after the apostles um, ministry um, these were written 33 years according to historians after the, they witnessed them I would say it's a, an incredible detailed record written 33 years now maybe some of them had scribes and it was written and kept and it wasn't released till 33 years after or it was recalled 33 years later and, and recorded. I, I cannot, I can't, I have no knowledge of how, how it, how it was uh, done that way and why it was done that way. But the um, historian in the scriptures has, has marked this down as uh, 33 years after the crucifixion. After two days, so this is Mark 14, after two days was the feast of the Passover, and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at me, there came a woman having an abalaster box of ointment, a spikenard, very precious, and, and, and she break the box, and poured it on his head. So we're getting different details, it's wonderful, you get all different details, the same account, but different details. And there, and there were some that had indignation within themselves. I wonder if that's what really, you know, got the goat of Judas, and he thought, oh, you know, I just don't believe Jesus. You know, we're told all this, and he does all this, and so um, obviously, uh, because all, all the disciples were a bit put out by by this woman using this expensive oil on the Lord, not realising that she was anointing her, her saviour, her Lord, for the uh, burial with a sweet sweet smelling um, oil, uh, an essential oil. I'm not sure what spite I was taken from, I'm going to have to look that up. Um, Spikenard, I wonder if it's frankincense, but I don't know, Spikenard, I'll look that up, see what plant that comes from, or what root. 
And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whomsoever ye, whomsoever ye will, ye may do, do them good, but me ye have not always. So have done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, where, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached, throughout the whole world, this also that she have done shall be spoken for, spoken of for a memorial of her. And so it is. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad, and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that thou mayest go and prepare? that thou mayest eat the Passover. And he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. The master saith, Where is, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And, and he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared, there make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city, and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve, and as they sat and did eat meat, did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And they began to be sorrowful, and to say unto him one by one, is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. And as they did eat, Jesus broke bread and blessed, and break it, gave to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it, and he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed, shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more the fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will I not, will not I? And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehement, vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise, also, also said they all. And they came to the place which, which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I, I shall pray. And he taken with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed, and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is in exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that it were possible the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not that what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them asleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, Sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? 
Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. It is enough, the hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go, lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately, while he yet spake, come Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude, with swords and staves, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, take him, and lead him away safely. So it will be dark at this time. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straight away to him, and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote the servant, the high priest, and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are ye come out as against the thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and ye took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And there followed him a certain young man, having the linen, cloth cast about his naked body and the young man laid hold on him and he left the linen cloth and fled from them fled from them naked and they led Jesus away to the high priest and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes and Peter followed him afar off even into the palace of the high priest and he sat with these servants and warmed, warmed himself at the fire and the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death, and found none. For many bare false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bare, and bare false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, and saith, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy, what think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him, and to cover his face, and to buffet him, and to say unto him, Prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus in Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I knew not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And the maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again, and a little after, that they stood by again, said again to Peter, Surely art thou one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth there, there too. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crowed twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he fought, fought thereon, he wept. <laughs> Straight away in the morning, the chief priest held a count, uh, consolation, consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council, and bound Jesus, carried him away, and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he, an he answering, said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the priest chiefs 
The chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answer so nothing? Behold, how many things excuse me how many things they witness against thee? But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marvelled. Now at that feast he, he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them, and they had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do so, as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will, what will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil have ye done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band, and they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it about his head, and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed, and did spit upon him, and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him, and put on his own clothes, his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. And they can compel one Simon of Syrian, Cyrene, Cyrenian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is, being in interpreted, the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with mirth, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots unto them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the superscription super super of this accusation was written over, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucify two thieves, the one on his right hand, and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, And he was numbered with the transgression, transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads, and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple, and built it in three days, save thyself, and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said, Among themselves with the scribes, he saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour, bearing in mind the whole nation of Israel, just witnessed the Lord's miracle, healing people, and the reports of that, the lepers being healed, blind. Uh, people with leprosy had to report. It was a law to report because they, they had to cry in front of them, you know, dead man. Lepra, and uh, if they were healed in, according to the law they had to go and report it to the, the priests and the scribes so they all had these witnesses they all knew that they still didn't believe so blessed are those that believe who've not seen the Lord save thyself and come down from the cross likewise also the chief priests mocking said unto themselves with the scribes he saved others himself he cannot save let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross, and we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land till the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, 
My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by, when they heard it, said, Behold, he called it, he called it Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar, and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice, and gave up the ghost. Praise God. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, James the less, and of jo 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 Jose and Salome who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. And now when the evening was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honor honourable counsellor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate, and cut, craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marvelled if he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had any any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he brought fine linen, and took down, and wrapped him in the linen, and laid him in a sepulchre, sepulchre which was hung out of rock, and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulchre, sepulchre. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus behold where he was laid. Now, if you think of the, the truer and shroud and and think of what, what the scriptures say that the Lord was wrapped in linen, um, that would have been one continual cloth I believe the Trojan shroud was not a, a continuous cloth but that uh, I don't know and when the Sabbath was passed Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him and very early in the morning the first day of the week they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun and they said among themselves who shall I who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were afraid. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they, they, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared, in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country and they went and told it unto the residue neither believed they them afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their, un with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen and he said unto them, go, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe, believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. 
and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they speak, uh, cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Well, I'll have a pause, and then we'll continue the last half of Luke and John's Gospel. Um, just the wonderful different details, the different areas. And it uh, takes a lot of consideration if, you, if there's an, 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 uh, a slight difference. You have to really consider before you can see why, you know, what that what that means. Um, like spikenard and mirth. Now that it's, it's just two words for the same thing, and, and you get people who criticise, but those people will miss out on the uh, the beauty of the gospel, and the, and the you know the gracious accounts how there's bits bits of information that aren't covered in one and then details that are covered in one not another and then when you lay them put them all on top of each other and consider the whole lot you get a wonderful picture it's a lifelong study um, right Luke we're gonna uh, in the next part we're gonna do Luke and John now John is a a real detailed account of the uh, crucifixion. There's a different witnesses, and also I believe Gethsemane. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading the next two gospels. So stay tuned. Right, continuing on for emphasis of the uh, atonement and crucifixion, the betrayal, the trial. The Blessed Lord's wonderful um, victory and crucifixion and his uh, his burial and his resurrection uh, spilling his precious blood. This is what this talks all about, the blood, the holy blood of the Lord, the beautiful, um, powerful blood just one little drop is enough to redeem the whole world because it's God's blood and um, I want to share a few thoughts and some considerations that I've, I've, I've considered and studied uh, um, we're going to look at Luke and uh, John's Gospel now Luke um, gives some great detail in Gethsemane that the other Gospels don't now John completely admits, omits, um, he just mentions that uh, he goes straight from Gethsemane to the betrayal. There's no detail in Gethsemane, but Luke expounds, excuse me, the suffering. And, um, but uh, John focuses a lot more detail on the crucifixion. So there's a lot, lots of areas to consider and then he, I hope it it conveys the characters of each each person. Uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew the accountant, Luke the doc. I think Luke was a doctor. I'm not sure what Mark was, or I'm not sure what John's profession was. But they're totally different characters, different hearts, different minds, different uh, views, different ways of viewing things, and and you can see that beautifully through the. Um, Parenthesis, and also you see that they are the that how they fell down. Peter's flesh and boasting, you know, wishful thinking with his heart. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the grave with your Lord. And then, then you see the um, after their conversion, the complete power that the the, 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 the apostle Peter had when he uh, healed in the temple and he went boldly speaking of the gospel. And uh, even unto death, he, he he was just completely converted with that holy, with the Holy Spirit. Um, so I want to consider that uh, one of the accounts in um, Luke. Now there's a 
an account that an angel comes down to strengthen Jesus and that just one angel and that that really fascinates me and there's no that's the only account and I wondered is that the Holy Spirit or is that just a ministering angel it doesn't say but it, that's always something I, I, I just wonder about you know that angel and none of the other Gospels give that account and then we have um, John's more personal witness of the uh, crucifixion and the, the, the wisdom and the purpose in and the depths within the scriptures are just uh, just um, infinite because we have an infinite God and it's an infinite holy spiritual word and um, so I want to give um, just a few analogies of um, the Lord's a, a restoration, the atonement. So I've used this before in another talk, but uh, we think of um, we know that the, if that were, if the human if the world would be perfect, we could liken it onto this rope of families. You know, perfect, never break, never fray, just continually straight. But we know that that's not not the world we live in. The world we live in is broken if you if you splatter a spider you can't put it back if you say something to one of your loved ones and hurt them you cannot make it right you can't change it you can't take you can't go back in time because time's forward and uh, you can't put it right if you kill somebody you can't bring that life back you can't replace that life you can't comfort that family if you know you think of all the pain or the tragedy or, or from the little things to the things you don't do to the things you do the things you say all, all these things we're going to be have to give an account of every thought action and deed uh, whether you're whether you're judged unsaved or you got an, you'll have to give an account of what you've done with your life after you've saved and we're, we're all going to spend that time personal time with the saviour to give an, an account now, now that's a, a fearful thought you know uh, that's something I'm, I'm going to trust the Lord that he's, he's going to be there to you know help me and um, some of the things I've done I'm, I'm ashamed of uh, uh, and then that's what our you know we're wretched we're wretched sinners and that's like the human race with all these frayed ends no, no one can put them right so I would just want to demonstrate that, that the, the whole human race from beginning to end is uh, just frayed you know there's no perfect man there's no no one can put that right once that's been once a family once a human race has been infected with sin it goes wrong you know, it goes wrong and wrong and wrong. So it's like a frayed rope cut. Its it, its potential has been cut off from the beginning, and time goes forward. So the Lord had to come in. Now the Lord's eternal, like like a ring, like a bit of sellotape. There's no, well we know that's made, but but the ring. There's no beginning, and there's no end. It's eternal, one eternal round. Uh, so you can kind of liken that to eternity. So in time, time goes forward, and this is um, uh, Second Corinthians uh, chapter six. Uh, now is the day of our salvation. Uh, now is the day. So in 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 eternity is now. It's always God is eternally constant. There's no time. He's eternal. There's no beginning. There's no end. So in time, it goes. The sun goes up, sun goes down. Sun goes up, sun goes down, and it goes forward in time. And there's decay. You know, DNA is not getting improving itself. No matter what you do, you can't put back. You can't repair that spider once it's you pulled its legs off. If you do such a thing, you cannot fix anything that's been broken. You, you can apologise, you can say sorry, but that's not going to change anything. Uh, there's no real justice. There's only the only um, 
justice is uh, God's eternal restoration of, of what he paid on the cross, what he suffered in Gethsemane. So only, only Christ can restore the human race. So if you're an unbeliever and you're looking for your, a, a better life, a better world, the Lord's died to save and give you, to restore the perfect human race back together. So all, all that believe will be restored into a perfect family, uh, the kingdom of God, which is in, a, in the believer's heart. And then we have the kingdom of heaven on earth, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. When that time, when the time in probation meets that time where eternity will return back to earth and rule, because the earth's the Lord's footstool. And the Lord's promise to uh, restore uh, restore Israel back to their promise and he's going to uh, pull the branch out of the fire and uh, the nation of Israel is going to be born in one day that's a future prophecy and the devil is going to be there to destroy it but the Lord's going to deliver Israel and he's going to rescue them he's going to appear on the Mount of Olives and it's going to split in two and the Jews are going to run to their Messiah so there come a time where the Lord will return to earth. Now on the cross, He's beat all all of all of the enemies because He overcome everything in this life. He paid the price. He's um, convicted all the sin. All fall short. Look at the disciples. All fell down one after the other because of their hearts, their wicked hearts. Their, you know, you might think you're a good intention and try and make up the difference, but really you. You're just adding dirt onto dirt. You're adding mistake onto mistake. You're found unfounded, and only the Lord can put you on a perfect foundation, on, on, on an eternal foundation. So when you believe, you're granted eternity in into your heart. So you you have eternal life. You have that eternal spirit, that eternal nature. There's no beginning or end to your nature. But although you had a beginning. So an eternal God has given you his eternal nature. So you had a beginning because you were born and because the Lord created um, man out of the dust and then from the, from the man he took the rib out and uh, genetically replicated um, another human being of the opposite sex and, and called, called, called her woman. So we've got man and woman, which are one flesh, like a husband and wife, one flesh. So we all have a beginning. But when we're graft, when we're, um, if you're um, a, seed, a seed of Israel, you'd be grafted back in. But if you're uh, never, never knew or not in the old covenant, not in the covenant of the Lord, you're invited into the eternal, eternal restoration of what Jesus Christ has accomplished on the cross. So all. All the bad people in this world will come to naught because uh, Christ made an open show of all wickedness. Everything that was in men's hearts, their deviousness, their cunningness, their covetousness, their pride, their lying. And we're all sinners, so the Lord has placed his holiness by his spilling of his precious blood, his paying for our death on the cross and rising again victorious because he's he's God and he had the power to lay his life down and take it up again so he imputes an eternal round eternal life into the believer so now that because you have a beginning you're you, it's appointed unto men once to die unless you take part in the rapture there's a few exceptions you will put on your incorruptible body like Jesus showed on the Mount of Transfiguration and as he appeared and he still had that he still had his wounds and he, he's going to appear in, with his garment dipped in blood he's going to be in blood and people are going to look on him his people are going to look on him and say you know what are these wounds in your hands that's a, a prophecy of Isaiah um, I think oh, it's one of the Old Testament prophets, and uh, 
the Lord will impute that eternal life into the believer. So we've received that eternal spirit and nature and that's in heaven with Christ, with God the Father. So only the Lord could uh, restore all that's, done, all that's gone wrong from the beginning, all the sin, he paid for it in Gethsemane. And that's what we're uh, studying. So um, I wanted to share those thoughts. And um, I hope if you're uh, new to the um, new to the gospel, you're, you, you've come across this and you're not a believer, I'd invite you to believe. Uh, but if you're new to the scriptures, I'd encourage you to study because the Lord, once you've re read the scriptures, you'll take it in. I'm not very good at recalling scriptures, but everything I've read and studied and the Lord's impressed and edified me, it, it's still in me, it's, it's there, and I can remember the Holy Spirit will bring them things to my remembrance. And then the more you read, the bigger picture and the clearer understanding you get. And then when you lay all the pieces out, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And then you pick up bits here and you pick up bits there. And then you start with, with Genesis and you go through the history. And then you go through the prophets and then you start to understand. And now um, I've had to, some things I've, the Holy Spirit's just taught me. Other things I've had to, I would have struggled with. So I've, um, I found a teacher teaching and that's increased my understanding and then I go back and I reevaluate and I study and then I go oh I was wrong there and they need to adjust there and then and then um, I, I increase in my understanding by the Holy Spirit so I hope um, you're not put off if you're new to the gospel uh, studying the Holy Word and um, I pray you're hungry for the Word and you continue reading and just study and study and study and your understanding will increase and uh, keep increasing every time. And your um, once you've got it, you, you it just flows from your heart. And you, um, but if you stop watering, you stop eating, you you become lean and skinny, and you you'll wither. So it's a constant um, renewing of the mind through studying the living waters every day to refresh what you've um, what you've taken in. If you've got a poor memory, the Holy Ghost is like a, a giant data bank and it will bring it back to your mind and increase something new you, you, you study. And you can start, you, it's a lifelong study and, and the more you study, the more the more increase you get from reading f over the, over what you've already read, you'll get different things that you never saw before, and certain things jump out at you. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, testimony to have. I'm very grateful and thankful to the Lord for all the people that have taught me, all the, all the, for the Holy Spirit, for the Lord, for teaching me and and sharing these wonderful His wonderful Word. And, and I have that for eternity, and I'm no doubt, um, I pray that we uh, we have scriptures in heaven where we can uh, carry on studying. But we won't, we won't, we probably won't need the scriptures. Anyway, um, I wanted to share those thoughts, and uh, I'm going to continue on uh, with the parenthesis and from Luke 22, and then um, John, and then... Um, so let's begin. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover, and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then enter Satan, into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being in the number of the twelve. And he went his way, and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to portray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. So we have to see the, the pattern of all the feast days were perfect. Now the Lord gave those um, feast days, he gave the law, he fulfilled the law, completed the law, established the law. And he also 
was living, he was the real living embodiment of the Passovers, of the uh, feast days. It was just incredible. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be quick killed. So the Passover, passing over from the old covenant into the new covenant. Uh, so there's a sim symbology in, 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 in the uh, feast days. All, all testifying and glorifying God and his, uh, his wisdom and glory. And he, and he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? He said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room, furnished, there make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have to de desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and brake it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also, the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Praise the Lord. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth, as it was determined, but woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. So if you see the, the weakness of the disciples, how green they were, but um, you've got to consider in hindsight, we, we have hindsight today and uh, the disciples didn't, they were quite, quite naive and I'm sure they would have, if we were take in that time, they would probably outshine us, so I don't think you can be too hard on the disciples and um, given the, the blessings and the Holy Spirit and the hindsight we have today, uh, we can look easily look back and think, you, you know, you know, find fault in the disciples. Oh, how could they compare and wonder, you know, measuring who's going to be the greatest at the end? You know, they hadn't even hadn't even been saved yet or born again yet, and they're always they're, they're all coveting the best seats in in heaven. And he said unto them. The kings of the Gentiles exercise, exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is the greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whoever is greater, he that sitteth at me, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at me, but I am among you, as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I anoint, appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father had appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, and to, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice, before thou 
before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. <coughs> and he said unto them, When I sent you without purse, and script, and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that have a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. And he that have no sword, let him sell his garment, and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressions, transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. They're just carrying on going. Uh, you may be wondering why they, they had swords. Um, I'm not absolutely sure, but it's possibly to defend themselves against wild animals, but not to take up arms and or it may have been to defend themselves, I don't know. And he came out and went, as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptations. So Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane now. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou will, willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as if it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. So the Lord shedding his blood in the garden. He's in such pain and agony that the blood's coming out of his pores because it's painful, he's suffering this pain. Now one thing, talking about the greenness of the disciples and giving a witness of what Jesus experienced in the uh, Gethsemane, you don't, you're not re they didn't really have an understanding of what he was going through. And this is why I was saying at the beginning that the Lord was suffering all sin He's suffering the full weight of sin, and because he's God, he can take it, and his body's not going to kill him. But if it was, if we were to take that pill, we'd be instantly dead. We'd hit the floor like a, like we'd been sucked by a giant powerful magnet, and it would absolutely crush us. It'd, we'd probably explode. Um, so we have the Almighty God and Lord suffering all that sin and pain in in a, in a very short space of time. So he's he's drinking it. He's taking it upon himself, all that sin, and it's kind of like digesting it. And then he's going to die, having bled, having bled in the garden, having, and then he's going to bleed on the cross when he's pierced for his hands and feet. So his blood redeems us, his death redeems us, his resurrection saves us into, the, into his kingdom. And the kingdom's uh, imputed into the heart of the believer. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if that will, willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as, as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, he held a mul uh, behold a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betray us the son of man with a kiss. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with, us with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Now you may think that the accounts are contradictory, but you'll get if you, if you imagine a film and you recall it and you miss bits out of the film, and you're sitting next to somebody on the sofa, and, and they, they they and you're trying to explain what's going on what film you've just watched to somebody who hasn't seen the film and the other person 
we'll add their bit well you missed a bit out there this happened as well so you're getting you're getting so much in four different accounts so it's in you're getting uh, all the same account but recalled from a different perspective and different details so there's no contradiction in, in the parenthesis in the witness and the, of the Gospels when they which were about him saw what would follow they said unto him Lord shall we smite with the sword and one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear and Jesus answered and said suffer ye this far and he touched the ear and he healed him and then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him be ye come out as against this thief with swords and staves when I was daily with you in the temple ye stretched forth no hands against me but this is your hour the power of darkness deception and cunning lies with, mur with murder in their hearts then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house and Peter followed afar off and when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were sat down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of an hour after that, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crew, Then shall thou deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bit bitterly. So we have an account there that the Lord must have been passing from one place to another. And he glanced at Peter at that very moment. And you don't get that account in the other. And that's probably what made uh, Peter weep. The Lord's, you know, what the Lord was going through. And then Peter to see it and realise, you know, just how weak and feeble that a sinful man is. That, that there's no good in, there's no... No good thing in man. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us, and he said unto them, If I tell you, ye will not believe. And if I also ask you, ye will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of God, right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we, are, we ourselves have heard it of his own mouth. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidden to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ the King. And Pilate answered him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. See, Jesus was heir to the throne of Israel. He, he, that was his bloodline. He was in line to be the king. But instead of taking his kingdom, he laid his life down. But they would have had a record if they would have uh, studied. They'd have had a the record of the people, of the Jewish people and the chief priests and scribes would have known, would have had that record because they were hardened in their heart 
and they just wanted him dead. They willing, they knew, in, they knew what they were doing, and they killed the king. They killed Christ. They killed their Messiah. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether this man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him for a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, with his men of war, set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before that they were in enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he was had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people, said unto them. Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, Herod, for I sent you unto him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity, he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder, was cast into prison. Pilate therefore willing to release... Oh. Now, just a consideration, Jesus said um, about the uh, Antichrist that uh, you reject you rejected him and you would uh, accept somebody in their own name and uh, here at the judgment of Jesus they've accepted a murderer they've accepted a man a sedition made in the city a rebellious man and who was in prison for murdering and the Jews accepted him over their king and messiah just like uh, they're going to accept the Antichrist, uh, who's going to come in his own name, which Jesus prophesied of. I just wanted to include that and just thought of that. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil have he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of, of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they had led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrene, Cyrenian coming out of the country and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus and there followed him a great company of people and of women which also bewailed and lamented him but Jesus turning unto them said daughters of Jerusalem weep not for me but weep for yourselves and for your children for behold the days are coming in the which they shall say blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear, and the paps that never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, What shall be done in, in the dry? And that prophecy was fulfilled once uh, uh, Jerusalem was ransacked after the rebellion, and it, which was crushed. crushed. 
and also that 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 curse continues. And there were also two other mal malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription, uh, super, superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the King of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were ha uh, hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does thou... Does thou does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Uh, so there we see a type of... Uh, an example of faith alone in, in the Lord alone and uh, this thief didn't have opportunity to be baptised in water but uh, he was saved nevertheless and it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst so that's a sig signal of the end of the old old covenant and the need for a holy temple because Jesus is the temple the body his body is the temple and the body of the believers the uh, living temple of God uh, indwelling the believer so that's the end of the uh, the law the um, mosaic law and the, the need for continual sacrifices because Jesus is the once and forever sacrifice so there's uh, the father in his wrath uh, causing an earthquake to break the temple and split it in two and split the uh, veil of the temple right down the middle. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintances and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counsellor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them, he was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen, laid it in a, 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 sepul a sepulchre that was before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. And the woman also, which came after him from Galilee, followed after him. And behold, the sepulchre and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointment and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, uh, that would be a Sunday. So uh, traditionally the church... The Lord, the Lord of the Sabbath has risen on a Sunday in his rest, the day of rest. He created the, he created the world and rested on the seventh day from his labours. So there's a type there of the Sabbath rest, uh, but 
fulfilled, so there's no Sabbath because that's, a, that's of the law. We have uh, the eternal rest and um, in Christ, say that's a Sunday, so the early church would uh, gather on the Sunday, the little house, ch house churches, all the uh, synagogues, people who uh, worship, gathered in the synagogue, traditionally done that on a Sunday. But there's no lawful, lawful requirement. It's not a, it's not a commandment to uh, keep the Sabbath. It's a commandment to believe in Jesus. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they returned his words, remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, Two of them went the same day to a village called Imanus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden, holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these? that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus and Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should redeem Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and a day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while we were taught with him by the way, and while he opened up to us the scriptures? And they rose up, and the same man returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. 
But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen the Spirit. He said unto them, Why are that ye troubled? Why do ye, why do why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit have not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed, not for, believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And he gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, or I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And he and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is, it behoved Christ to suffer, and to rise in the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of, of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. So you can't really understand the Old Testament until you've received the Holy Spirit. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. Alright, John's Gospel. Let's go straight to John's Gospel. Right, uh, chapter 17. I'd encourage people to, I'm not going to cover that. Um, chapter 17, the Lord's intercession and prayer for his uh, believers. Right, chapter 18. Jesus arrives at Gethsemane. Um, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook, Cedron. So this is after the Passover. Where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a, ha a hand of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he, and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. And Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear, right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captains and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Annas first. For he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. And Caiaphas was he, now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Uh, 
Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out the other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto, spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them, and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world, I ever taught in the synagogue, and in the temple, wherever the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why ask thou me? Ask them which heard me. What have I what have I have said unto them? Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil, but if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas has sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest and Simon Peter stood and warmed himself they said therefore unto him art thou art not thou also one of his disciples he denied it and said I am not one of his one of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off saith did not I see thee in the garden with him Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crow then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the Hall of Judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the Judgment Hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Obviously already judged him. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, saying, Thou, thou this thing, of, uh, sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it unto thee, or did others tell it, tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, I am a Jew. Thy own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. <coughs> but he have a custom that I should release unto you one at, one at the Passover. Will he therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited the crown of thorns, put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, and said, How, King of the Jews? And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns, the purple robe, 
And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man, behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou, knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee have the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sent to release him. But the Jews cried out, Excuse me. Saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever make himself a king speaketh against Caesar. And Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gavatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, saying, Away with him. Away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto him them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of the skull, place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him. One either side, one either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not that King of the Jews, but that he said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from top to bottom. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Which, thus, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now they stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciples, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith I first. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, put it upon hyssop, and gave it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and of, and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. 
but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came out came there out blood and water and he that saw it by record and his record is true and he knoweth that he has he saith true that they might be, that ye might believe for these things were done that the scriptures should be fulfilled a bone of him shall not be broken and again another scripture saith they shall look on him whom they pierced and after this Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus but secretly for fear of the Jews besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus and Pilate gave him leave he came therefore and took the body of Jesus and there came also Nicodemus which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of mirth and alloys, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen, linen cloths with uh, the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre, wherein was never man laid yet laid. There laid they Jesus therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved. And she saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other, side, other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre and he stooping down and looking in saw that a linen clothes lying yet went he not out. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and see if the linen clothes die and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by himself, by itself. Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. And as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead, then the disciples went away again unto their own home. Now just a point here. Um, now it seems like the, you read the accounts and they happen in different orders but when you put it all together it's in the same order it's just you see a diff, a, an event um, Jesus appeared to Mary uh, that was after the, uh, Mary had been to the tomb gone back home found the tomb empty gone back to Peter Peter had followed all Mary to the tomb there was nothing there, then they departed and then Mary's left to herself and she sees the Lord, the first one to see the resurrected Lord. And before you, anybody thinks that um, Jesus was married to Mary, that's a complete uh, nonsense. Uh, this is the Lord God and this is a sinful woman and this was just a beloved daughter of, of, of the Lord Jesus. And he chose uh, Mary to, we don't know why, but he chose Mary to... Um, appear to first and, and it could be a simple fact that she was the nearest and the nearest one to the tomb and the first to encounter the Lord um, coming up from the grave perhaps but Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping and as she wept she, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre and see if two angels in white sitting the one at the one ha head one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, 
which is to say, Master. Jesus saying unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whomsoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whomsoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my fingers into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered, and said unto him, My Lord, and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon, Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and the two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have you any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in the little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring her the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up, and drew the net to land for the great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all that were so many, yet was there not, not the net breaking. Jesus saith unto them, Come and, come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then come in and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples, after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dim, uh, dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, son of Jonas, Lovest thou more than me? Lovest thou more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. And he said to him again the second time, 
Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Joseph, lovest thou me? Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girded thyself, and walkest with her thou wouldest. But when thou shalt old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee with her thou wast not. Then this, this spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and saith, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeth him, uh, Peter seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the disciple, that this disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die, but if I that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testified of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there also are many other things which Jesus did, the which if they would, should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself, could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. And John uh, was, uh, went on to write uh, the book of Revelation in exile. So um, that's the parenthesis of the wonderful Gospels and the, the account of the precious blood of, of Jesus Christ, his death, burial and resurrection and the clothes there in his name. Amen.